Dr. Now, we, we, I, just, I introduced you. I showed him or uh, explained what plantar Great. fasciitis is with a few Excellent. illustrations. We explained or showed the official definition. Okay. And then I actually have these photos that um, you have shared with me. Great. So uh, I'll just take it away if you want to. I can. Sure. So plantar fasciitis. Heel pain caused from plantar fasciitis. I have to say this because the other cause of the heel pain could be a fracture. Uh, it could be a foreign body. Very rarely a tumor. I've never seen one. Or sometimes activities. I had a guy who had chronic heel pain, and after about two months, I realized he was crushing cans every day with his heels. So uh, you got to sort of be smart about this. Um, <clears throat> to treat this heel pain from plantar fasciitis, I'm talking about three things. The cause why you get the physiology and the treatment. So there's three things we'll focus on. So first, the cause. The fascia, if I have my nice little oh. flip bone here, okay, you can see this or not. You see yes, we can. There, is a ligament that goes from the heel to the ball of the foot. This ligament, and I'll represent this cloth as a ligament, is normally under high tension, like I'm pulling right here. For whatever reason, this ligament gets any swelling in a tight compartment, that causes a pain. Have you ever blown up a balloon and all of a sudden it comes back and blows your cheeks out? Because you got too much pressure in a tight compartment. So that's the cause of the pain. Number two, why do you get the pain? Why do you get the swelling? Because this ligament, my hand represents a ligament, you've got, I mean, just for TV here, you've got a tear in the ligament, a microscopic tear. It's like an old t-shirt. You have little teeny holes in it. It's got to heal that. Fascia, which is the ligament or a tendon, same structure, does not have any blood circulation to it, like skin or bone or muscle do. So the healing process, what the body does, instead of healing it right away, the body process makes the hole bigger. And it lays down new collagen in the gel form, and they call it the gel phase, and slowly, like a hair perm, that heals. <clears throat> so I'm Treatment with heel pain, it's not going to heal overnight. You get relief, but the long-term treatment is longer than, say, a cut in the skin or sometimes longer than a broken bone. <clears throat> but if you do what I propose um, and you get three weeks no pain, you're done. The number, uh, so let me go from there. Um, a little bit about myself. I've been in practice or was in practice over 35 years dealing with this. And I did all the standard treatments. I did the injections, steroid surgeries, taping, shoes, physical therapy, ultrasound. I did what was taught. And I observed that the heel pain was just not getting better. And so through a course of trial and error, talked to many doctors with a lot of patients, I came up with a treatment plan that in my hands treated at least 8% of people, cured them without steroid shots, which you may have heard of, without prescription medication, without surgery. I used to do at least a dozen surgeries a year on this, uh, without special shoes. And much as I'm a big fan and proponent of orthotics and quality shoes, you don't need those to address this pain. Um, going forward, like I said, this is a work in progress over the past 35 years. I'm curious to see if Katsu eventually can probably speed up this process. So um, try to look at my notes here, which is um, not the best. So the cause, you have this ligament, like I told you, it's a fascia in a tight compartment. If you get any swelling in this ligament, when you step down on this tendon, it's gonna hurt. So I'm gonna show a crude drawing. I don't know if you can see this or not. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, hold it up the there. because uh, yeah. yeah, okay, so I'll show it this way. Yeah. Um, this is my first uh, conference like this, so please excuse the uh, very sophomoric drawings. This is your ankle bone. This is your heel bone. And that's the ball of the foot. You've got a triangle. What connects the base of the triangle is a highlight in yellow is a fascia. And you notice that the ankle bone is really centered more over the heel, so the tension is more in the heel area. So you have this tight ligament and i'm going to demonstrate with this cloth let's pretend the fascia is not much thicker than this so if i if i had thicker cloth it would be more accurate but this is not far from the actual thickness of the fascia now i'm going to swell this 100 percent ready bend this in half 
we're now 100% swollen. But this and a normal ligament, I, I really can't tell. And that's why I tell people you're swelling, they'll say, well, I don't see it. Where's the swelling? Because we're uh, talking on a very small scale, not microscopic, but paper thin type of level. If we get rid of the swelling, we get rid of this pain. So why do you get the swelling? This ligament, like I said, microscopically has to tear in it. If we can heal this tear, we stop the swelling, stop the pain. And that's the whole goal behind it. What I've experienced over my career, those who do this and stick with it until three weeks of no pain heal the quickest. Many of my patients, you just guys, we start feeling better, we quit doing it. Because we've only treated the swelling, we haven't treated the tear. That's why you want to continue with the treatment until you get about 21 days of, of no pain and you're pretty much done. Of the six things, the first thing you want to do is raise the heel. So a lot of people, when, we wear, when you're barefoot and you're flat and the, the, the foot is really stretched out, the distance from here to here, that ligament is very tight. The ligament, like I showed on this beautiful drawing I have, is a triangle. As you raise the heel, by design, if this is your foot arch, as you raise the heel, the arch comes together. The distance from the ball of foot to the heel decreases and the ligament can go slack. You feel better. Many patients will say, I feel better when I put on my shoes, my high heel shoes. When I go barefoot, it hurts. So all I ask is any shoe with about a quarter inch of heel or higher, avoid barefoot, flat slippers, flat flip flops, Vans are popular shoes, one of the worst things for your heel pain. Uh, Converse shoes are very popular. Again, they're a rubber sole flat, nothing to it. As much as I like the structure of Birkenstocks, most Birkenstocks are a flat heel. And it's just going to strain this heel pain. So anything with a heel, this much higher or higher, I don't care. I've had patients wearing their pumps doing their vacuum in the morning because it makes their heel pain feel better. Once the pain is gone, you can go back to going barefoot or flat shoes, whatever you want to do. So rule number one is something with a heel at least a quarter of an inch high. Number two, this ligament I told you about is really right below the skin. If you were to take your heel or the palm of your hand, notice how you can pinch the top of your hand, but you can't pinch the bottom. The foot's the same way. The top of the foot you can pinch, the bottom you can't, because that ligament we're talking about, the fascia, is invested part of the skin. So if you ice this, it's right below the skin. That ice does what? It shrinks swollen tissues. You watch these, eh, like the Super Bowl, or these million-dollar basketball players, or a pitcher, uh, million-dollar pitchers. They get injured. What do they do? They're not doing electric. They're putting ice right on the injured swollen uh, ligament and or tendon or tissues. Ice is cheap, is effective, and works right away, right now. When I have my patients ice, you've not iced before, you got to get used to it. So typically I'll say, take a, a baggie of water, a couple ice cubes, put on the ground, and then put your heel right into the ice. Um, you need to ice at least 10 minutes. Five, 10 minutes, you haven't really started the process. Uh, at least 15 minutes, and I have my patients ice for a half hour, even an hour sometimes. You get used to icing, and the icing shrinks that painful swollen tissue. Um, you'll notice that every time you ice, you can tolerate more and more ice water, uh, cold water. I see these people, I was talking to Steve about who do these ice swims. I don't know how they do it, but they acclimate. They don't start off at, you know, 30, 40 degree water. They start off at 70 degree water and slowly get colder and colder. Same as with the icing. The third of the six things, and this is an important part, is a deep calf muscle massage. Steve, can you show those two pictures? Yeah. I just yes, you? just a moment. So we blow them up. The one on the left, that's the outer muscle called the gracilis. You see it's got two heads there. And notice the full length of the leg, it's about a third, not quite a halfway is muscle only. The rest is all tendon. Now go to the muscle on the other side, the right side, that's called the soleus. This is underneath your calf muscle. It's the second muscle. Notice how long that muscle belly is. It's a long muscle belly um, before it turns into tendon. So the reason I'm showing you this, and you can go back to our regular screen, Steve, is because this whole complex, it's a muscle that causes a problem. Again, another beautiful third grade uh, designer photo here. 
There's your muscles, which I call a spring, connected to the tendon, which is a chain, to a block of wood with the heel, which is a heel. So you had a simple contraption, a spring, pulling a chain connected to a block. Now those three things, the block, the bone doesn't stretch. We know that. Too much tension on a bone, you'll fracture it. The chain, which is the Achilles tendon, much like the fascia, has about 4% stretch in it. It's the muscle belly that it contracts. It contracts completely, fully, or it can expand. It's this tight muscle belly that's the cause. When the muscle is tight, it pulls on the chain, the tendon, which raises the heel. And here's your, again, I apologize for these very poor drawings. There's the Achilles tendon force pulling up the heel normally. When it's too tight, you can see how this raises. Look at the look at the force in here. Right here. This force, the heel's raising, it's off the ground. Well, no one walks for their toes on the ground. It's just your foot like like this. You can see, okay, like this. So what happens is because gravity pulls your arch down, your arch expands. That fascia gets pulled. If we don't address the calf muscle, which I use my arm as a calf muscle, if we don't address this, we're never going to heal this. So what do we got to do? We have to do deep muscle massage. Now, a lot of people think, oh, I'll do stretches. You know, you go against the wall, you push your foot, or you know, the, 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 uh, uh, the, the, the stretching. Um, the problem with that is you're taking a tendon, which may be damaged, the Achilles tendon, trying to pull the muscles that are contracted. Muscles have billions of contracted muscle fibers. And you're trying to take a healthy tendon and pull it apart. Chances are you're going to cause Achilles tendonitis. But if you massage the muscle belly itself, the little teeny fibers that are contracted, as you massage them, the fibers just unlock and they have to, by design, return like a boat in a slip to their normal length. Now look how long, if this represents a muscle fiber here, when I massage it, look much longer that muscle fiber gets. Now multiply times millions and millions, the muscle belly actually gets longer, taking tension off the Achilles tendon, so the heel to come down and the fascia becomes slack. So how do you massage this? This is the, the key part. If this is our muscle right here, our muscle belly, I'm trying to see which is, looks good. I got too much glare in here. There we go. If you take your palm of your hands, massage it, or a tennis ball, which has too much flex in it, as you can see, you're not doing much. You got to use your fingertips and get down, down deep. And that drawing that Steve showed you, there's two muscles. So a lot of people will go up and down the leg like this, the muscles. You're not diving down. You've got two muscles, the, the gracilis I showed you and the soleus, they're contracted. If you massage on the top, you're not getting this guy down here. So you got to do a deep dive. I prefer the fingertips. If fingertips get sore, I didn't have a golf ball. Take a ball like this. Like a, I'm using a marble, but I couldn't find a golf ball. I take a golf ball, and I'll put it on my calf muscle. Oh, boy, I don't see this. And the palm of my hand, I'm massaging nice and deep. So, like, if this is my calf muscle, I'm massaging nice and deep. But what's works much better, I've had much better success, is the Theragun. They're very popular now. The Theragun brand is very expensive. You can go online and find knockoff models, which use work which work just as well and get the smallest smallest attachment you don't want to get the attachments that are big and knobby you want to get ones that are like a finger and as you put them if this is your calf muscle as you put them in it's massaging that and you'll feel it and as it gets better and better your heel pain starts going down because of this domino effect you stop the contracted muscle which stops pulling the Achilles tendon which stops raising the heel which stops straining your plantar fascia uh, a simple test. If all you can take this, you know, your finger again, your fingertips, not your pad, fingertips, squeeze your tendon like this. That doesn't hurt. Okay, now if I'm going to, excuse me, I'm going to take my cat. Oh, it's too dark, isn't it? Let's see. Uh, I'm right now, I'm, you can't see, I'm trying to grab my, my, my cap. I'm squeezing really hard and it doesn't hurt. 
you should be able to squeeze your calf muscle like this. If it hurts, you know you got contracted muscles. Um, many patients of mine have contracted muscles that don't have plantar fasciitis. So I tell them, watch out. I believe it's the number one cause for the ruptured Achilles tendon. You all saw the football game this past weekend. The one lineman of the Niners, he's ready. He runs up to the field, takes two steps, falls to the ground. He tore his Achilles tendon. And I maintain, if I go back, I dollars to donuts, his muscle, his calf muscles, which are very strong and powerful, were too contracted. And that Achilles tendon is at constant high tension. Something's got to give. And a sudden burst of power, snap. I've had many patients, Achilles tendon, exactly the same story. So deep calf muscles massage. This is muscle only. Don't mess with the tendon. Don't need to go there. Just focus on the massage of the muscle, which is the top half, uh, third of your calf muscle. That's probably the most difficult one I have patients to do. But once I demonstrate, I grab that, that fascia, that, that muscle, and dig right in, that shouldn't hurt at all. The next three are, uh, are more straightforward, less intense. The heel itself, the, I told you the fascia has got little tears in it, right? As the body heals, you want to help speed up the healing process. So I get something hard like a golf ball or a marble, and I put it on, my foot on it, and I rub back and forth like this. I try the tennis ball. doesn't work. It's too forgiving. You need something hard. Rolling pin is fine, but the radius is too big. So a golf ball works the best. Put it on the ground. For about 10 minutes, rub your foot back and forth about five minutes. If you go 10, it's great, five minutes. Now, after doing that, it may hurt. Well, how do you get rid of the pain? Stick it in ice. Ice right after. So I'm a big fan of when you go for a walk, run activity, feeling good, your body's been pumping the fluid out, put it on ice. Um, the next thing is when you've been sitting for a while or get out of bed, that's classically when you get the pain. You get out of bed, and I call it a chopstick walk. You walk like this because it hurts so bad to walk on your heel. But after about 10 minutes, it feels better. Well, I told you that the plantar fasciitis is a swelling in a tight compartment. That compartment, that swollen ligament, is in a compartment. And this represents the uh, swollen ligament. As you move the foot back and forth, it acts like a pump and pumps the fluid out. That's why many people say, I have to walk it off in the morning. I feel better. Well, instead of going through the pain, before you get up, simply sit on the edge of your bed and wiggle your foot for about 20, 30 seconds. You'd be surprised how much that does. Or you sit and watch a movie, say, war and peace, three or four hours sitting down. You know it's going to hurt when you get up. Wiggle your foot for about 20 seconds. When you get up, the pain is already greatly reduced. And then the last thing I have my patients do is aspirin. Now, a lot of people can't take, some people can't take aspirin, then don't do it. You need an anti-inflammatory. Tylenol is a pain reliever. It's not an anti-inflammatory. I go to aspirin because Motrin and all those uh, prescription drugs are based on aspirin. Aspirin is cheap. It works well. Take the recommended dose, one or two aspirin, while you sleep. When you're sleeping, your body's trying to repair that fascia. What does it do? It swells. What's aspirin? An anti-inflammatory. So when you get up in the morning, instead of having a fully blown out swollen uh, fascia, it may only be partially swollen. And now we have less swelling to do. As you get rid of the swelling, it helps the healing process, makes the pain go down. And that's about it in a nutshell. The six steps that in my hands, I, I tell the colleagues, and I'd watch them go through the steroid shots, and it's not fun to have a steroid shot in the heel. And, um, I rarely had to give them anymore. I went from a dozen surgeries a year on average to, to one or two every two or three years. Steroid shots, maybe one or two, three months. Because some people are that that 20% that need that extra over the hump. Got it. Thank That's you it. very much. Yeah, thank you very much. I just wanted to um, ask a question about, you had first the deep massage of yep. the, in the belly of the of the calf muscles. And then you had the golf ball sort of massage at the bottom of your feet. And then it, if it hurts, then in ice. Right. How much time would you say for each of those? Sure. And how many times of the day over that three-week magic window? Excellent. Well, first of all, you can't do it enough, I've found out. Okay. Uh, um, with the, the icing, at least 15 minutes with the icing, several times a day. My goal is 
I, I arbitrarily said an hour's worth of icing a day. Most people on our hectic, hectic work pace can't go an hour straight. They'll do 20 minutes here, 30 minutes there. That's great. For me, icing, when well, I've had this heel pain myself, icing was the hardest for me to do. I had to stop and ice. So I had to find something to read, some, something to do. The calf muscle, which is, I believe, the key, if you go uh, like 10 minute sessions, most people can't do that. So I would say go two or three minutes, it's gonna hurt, and then do it again later in the day. The Theragun, most people tolerate the Theragun very well. Um, a few people didn't get well with Theragun because they weren't pressing hard enough, so you go back to the fingers of the golf ball. But I do it at least you know, 90 seconds, high intensity, hurts like heck, do it several times a day, or go 10 minutes straight. I've had both patients uh, do both. Um, uh, the icing and on the heel, I don't do about five minutes. It, that's it, it, it helps a little bit. Just a five minute session is good, and you get more and more as it feels less painful. You'll notice you get more aggressive massaging the heel. Yeah. Okay. Great. I'd like to open it up to any questions um, that people may have. Sure. Uh, again, if you if you if you're not suffering from plantar fasciitis, great. But if you do know somebody who does, this is a very good um, bit of information that um, Dr. Nelly is sharing with us. I do want to say that I, um, uh, in all honesty, I have sent my parents to, and my sister and my daughter yes, to Dr. Right. Nelly. So uh, they have appreciated his um, honesty, professionalism, and expertise in this area. Yeah, so go ahead and either um, down below to either raise your hand or put a question in the chat room, and then uh, we can, or Dr. Nelly could could answer it. Just type away. And I do want as as you're you're preparing your your questions, I do want to say that Dr. Nelly had a. Um, uh, he had a benign cyst or tumor. I forgot what it was. The acoustic neuroma. Ah, and yeah. whatever it was, he, uh, it was a very serious injury and um, a surgery, actually. A, what, a quarter size <laughs> uh, hole in the skull that you... Yeah, yeah. And then they had to go to another wall of bone and they had three nerves. And if you very, if you hit the, the free nerve, the balanced nerve, the hearing nerve was swollen. And the facial nerve, which is the whole side of the face. If they even touch that, you're going to get a Bell's palsy. Uh, it was a long involved surgery. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, he, 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 he used Katsu and um, we, we got through that. So, that was yeah, great. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, so, we have a few questions. One is uh, what are bone spurs? A little bit. Ah, excellent yeah. question. That's a red herring. Uh, the natural heel bone, if you look at it, and show it and get right and you see i'm trying to film it yeah there you the, go the heel actually has what's called a tuber a ridge right here and you can see that ridge right there now as that fascia connects apart of it as it's pulling well, pulling off the bone bone is living tissue if a bone gets a little bone crack it forms a bone callus you keep pulling on that callus you get callus 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 to build up and that callus does what it turns into bone so you see that spurring, and you, aha, that's causing the pain. The problem with bone spurs is, by definition, if you look at them on x-ray, again, I'm trying to, sh ah, I apologize, I'm trying to get the, the right. The spur is going this way. It's not going down like you would think. I've had patients come in with real bad heel pain. Doc, I know I got heels, but I want surgery. We take an x-ray, no spur at all. I've had other patients come in, and for other reasons, I take a foot x-ray. I've had a spur as long as this finger. I go, oh, you have bad heel pain. And it was a joke because the patients, some of the older guys look at me and go, you, you call yourself a doctor? I've never had heel pain. So a bone spur has nothing to do with the heel pain. It just shows a sign of chronic tension. Treating the heel pain, I, again, I'd say I used to do a lot of surgery. I would go after and take care of the bone spurs. And I found it. Did, I still would have heel pain sometimes that came afterwards. And let alone the patients who have bad heel pain from plantar fasciitis with no spur. How do you explain that? So it's just a red herring. Leave the spur alone. It has nothing to do with it. 
every time I have a radiology report, if there's even a little bit of an enlarged tubercle, like I'm showing right here, they go, oh, you got heel spur. And of course, the patients and the primary doctor go upset, oh, you got heels, we got to treat this. I said, you're looking at the wrong thing. That's the smoke and mirrors. So the heel spur is just a big mis misnomer. It's way overrated. It's a fascia tension tear that's causing the pain. Got it. Good question. Yeah. And the next question, and I may go back to sharing my screen in the illustration you said is, sure. what are the main areas to massage the calf and the heel? Oh, and, excellent question. And I'm going to, I'm going to go to the sure here go ahead and so if you look at the two photos especially the one on the left those are the outer muscles when you massage your calf muscle or you squeeze it like that's what you're feeling those are contracted now go down a little bit Stephen, to the tendon the tendon has very little to do with the swelling or contraction so massaging the tendon doesn't do any good it's to massage the muscle which is the spring now go to the one on the right now, this is a little overexemplified, but you see how much longer this muscle belly is? It does go longer, but I stop about halfway down the calf. Almost the length of your hand from the top of your middle finger to the bottom of your heel of your hand. If you start from the, about your knee down, that's about the area you need to massage. The rest, of it, leave it alone. Now, that soleus muscle you're pointing to, that's underneath your outer calf muscles. And if you don't get that, you're not going to get rid of this heel pain. So you got to dive deep. And that's why people use those massage roller bars up and down from the knee down to the heel. You ain't doing anything. You only get in the, the part of the gastroc on your left, the one on the right, the soleus, that's what you got to get. That's how you get your fingertips and go right down into it. Um, again, a, a golf ball on the heel of your palm massaging, but the Theragun like devices they're the best. You stick that that those the 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 finest point you can, like a pencil diameter uh, uh, points on attachment, and you go right down, massage down to the bone if you can, and you'll know, you'll feel it, you'll feel it. Yeah. As far as the heal, it's only five minutes. It's a fascia itself. It's just trying to help the healing process. I only go up to five minutes in the heel, right where it hurts, and that's it. Leave it alone. But the, the the deep massage, the calf muscle, I I, I dare you to over massage it. Women, um, their physiology, they'll tend to bruise a little bit more. My wife just had this recently, and I could tell I was massaging her calf muscles. She had a few bruise marks where my finger thumb tips were digging into her skin. So, uh, ladies, you may notice a little bit of bruising um, when you're doing this right. But that all heals very well. Thank you. Let's see. All right. Thank you very much. Sure. Uh, any more questions? And see if I've found that people say, yeah, yeah, big deal. But when you have heel pain, all of a sudden, you know, what was he talking about? Yeah. Um, yeah. I wish I had a little bit of a demonstration of the calf muscle. I have to come up with some type of gizmo and get rid of these uh, uh, junior high drawings and uh, demonstrate a little better because as you know i, I demonstrated on you when i squeeze a calf muscle your mom too i squeeze yeah. that muscle and it hurts yeah when you heal you can squeeze a calf muscle like your biceps your triceps squeeze it you know, see how my fingertips are not like this but like this i can squeeze my calf muscles it doesn't hurt no heel pain yeah great yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're recording this, uh, Dr. Now, and we'll put it online so people can yeah. sure. do that again. Okay. And then um, any other questions? And if not, and then um, uh, Dr. Now, you've used Katsu for uh, probably 10 years. 11? Was it? Yeah, 10, 11. Yeah. yeah. So the blue 12 band, years the or water. so. The yeah. Blue band. Is that 2011? Yes. Yes. That's yes. That's thirteen. Come on, fourteen years now. Yeah. That, yeah. That's good. And no, no, uh, thirteen years. Um. My next step is that with a calf muscle, and we know how well katsu, um, you know, muscle strengthening and relaxation after workouts. I'm using katsu all the time. I would be curious to know with massaging calf muscle with a katsu on. Would that speed up the, the the process of unlocking the contracted muscle? Uh, as far as the swelling of the heel, would katsu therapy 
increase uh, the process of, of decreasing swelling. Um, I, I don't know where to apply that in this process, but that would be the, another level to look at. Again, these six things I've come up with uh, is, is not in stone. I, I've had to add things. Like, for instance, the wiggle when you first get up, that was the last thing I added because patients happen to mention that to me. They wiggled if they felt better. And so I'm always open to, is there another way to make this process faster and better? Okay, so we have two more questions. Um, sure. This is a follow-up to where are the main areas to massage? And no. um, the uh, questionnaire says, I feel pain on the outside of my calf. I have heard it is pain, but I also have foot pain. What do you think? Well, is a foot pain. I mean, is it, we're talking just the heel only or somewhere else? Because when you get the outside of the calf, then you got another muscle groups that actually go down the side of the muscles of the leg and to the outside of the ankle and they stabilize the ankle and they also help move the foot in one of the transverse planes. So that's a little more complex question because I'm not sure. Man, the foot's got 26 bones, 33 joints. We say my foot hurts. The first <laughs> thing I go, where? <laughs> Bill, it's just the foot. I mean, you look at your hip uh, to your foot, the hip uh, to your ankle joint, you only got four bones. The thigh bone, the two leg bones, and the fourth bone is the kneecap. From the below the ankle joint, you got 26 bones, and like I said, 33 joints, because some of the joints get together to become a super joint. So when people say my foot hurts, where? And I mean, you can go from one side of the foot a few centimeters over, completely different causes of physiology. So I'm, I, I don't mean to bounce the question back, but I have to. Where exactly is, is the pain? And you could, she could have a, uh, a, a she, he or she was ever calling, they may have contracted lateral muscle on the outside of the leg that's pulling up, causing them to walk on the side of the foot. And again, that's not really dealing with plantar fasciitis, although it has to deal with a contracted muscle. If your calf muscles are sore, whether in the back or the inside, the outside of the leg, massage them. Just get in there and start using your thumb. When you're watching TV, I mean, let me try and demonstrate, I get more light in here. So I'm watching TV, right? I pull up my pant leg. Uh, hold on one second. Let me get more light in here. I'm watching TV. I got calf muscle. I'll pull my foot up. And you can see I'm taking my thumbs. I'm going in. I'm not doing this. I'm getting my thumb tips in. My thumb tips are in. Or this. I call it the eagle grip or the Bruce Lee uh, you know, jaw to death. And I'm going as tight as I can in here it's not hurting many people i'll take my like this so i can i'll squeeze like this <laughs> and they're rolling over in pain and i know muscles so from here about here's my knee here's my calf it's all up in here that's that is the the sweet spot to get after and i usually start up high as they get better you go down lower this is the last part right about here that's the last part to get uh to unlock all right, thank you. Um, if the questioner would put more, um, oh, uh, yeah, he did uh, provide more information. IT pain, uh, IT band. Okay, it was his. Yeah, that is IT band. That uh, again, IT band really starts above the knee, out of my scope of practice. It does have an effect on the foot, but if you're treating the foot, the cause, the source is the IT band. Go to the source. I've had IT band I, I just swelling myself. Oh, it's the massage. I do the same massage, by the way. I get the Theragun, and it's on the side, you know, I'm trying to show right up here, and it hurts. It's like steel on muscle. It hurts. Uh, but you got to address that. A good phys uh, physical therapist, a good chiropractor, massage therapist, they can go after that and treat that. If you get that tight muscle, because if that's tight, Everything that abdominal effect, everything connected downward towards the foot is going to be contracted, pulled, and thrown off course. And the foot is a very organized orchestra. One uh, millimeter of timing off or delay or extra pull throws the whole thing uh, off in your gait. A normal person takes, you know, thousands of steps a day. You can see the buildup. So an IT band can cause a lot of foot pain, but the pain is really 
the cause of pain is IT band in this person's case. Got it. Got it. And then uh, this is another question. Uh, could you talk about, and I, I hope I'm pronouncing this correct, Char, Char Charcot Charcot. foot? Uh, yeah, Charcot Marie Tooth is her Charcot okay. foot. Yeah. Most Charcot foot are due, uh, well, it's due to a to, um, nerve condition. They have no sensation. Typically, diabetes have a, uh, a neuropathy. That's pathology of the nerve. They can't feel it. Um, there's also a disease called Charcot Marie Tooth disease, which is a neurologic thing that, again, affects the nerves. And they have a very unique gait, uh, weak muscles, and they, the muscles can't and the foot can't function right. Um, the shark of foot is a, is when we say shark of foot directly, most podiatrists are talking about a diabetic shark of foot. And the bone physiology has changed. Uh, you get actually it's like like an old barn it starts to collapse. These people can walk around the foot is collapsed. It's not a foot anymore. It looks like a like a meatball. And um, they're walking around. They can't feel. They have no sensation. Um, that usually requires reconstruction, and there's some uh, cutting edge stuff they've been doing the past five years. I actually uh, uh, bars in the foot, the midfoot. Um, I sort of got away from that. It was very involved surgery, very exciting. I had more interest to more daily stuff. But there are people who focus in that. So you want to find a podiatrist or orthopedic who specialize in Charcot foot because that's a long term, a lifelong issue. It feels good now, but you, what are you going to be in five, 10 years from now? You have to have special shoes. Uh, always, always keep an eye on this because just one bad day, like, you know, run out the mailbox and back in your bare foot and you may get a hole in your foot that doesn't heal or, you know, chronic ulcers. And that's a whole nother discussion. Yeah. Yeah. We actually had a, um, a bronze medal winning uh, Paralympian who had Charcot Marie Tooth disease. And, um, uh, from the from the waist up, yes, it's like uh, Mr. Atlas. I mean, just broad shoulders, big chest, a yeah. tapered uh, torso. But then from his the uh, calf muscle down, yeah, yep. it was it was exactly what you described. Right. We call them champagne legs. The thighs are so big, but they got these really skinny legs. And the the if this arch the foot, it's really high up. Is yeah. a classic, and they sort of walk to the side, yeah. And um, it's basically prevention, um, protection against the environment from from gate, and uh, yeah, that's been around for, for a while. And there's a lot of research in that it, beyond what I did, but people specialize in that area. And uh, the person who has this, they should be followed with someone who who specializes exactly in that disease. Yeah, and the young man actually who who has this. Um, he cannot warm up for his events. Is this a very long gentleman? Period. This is Jamal Hill. Oh, he, I know. I met Jamal a few times swimming. We, yes. we, had, we had a Mission Yeho meet, and I go, hey, this is the older machines. You know, the big, the box one goes, yeah. hey, you know Steve? Yeah, you know Steve? Yeah. And I, I saw him swim. His parents were there, and yeah, excellent swimmer. Great guy. Great, great personality. Uh, He's been dealt a, uh, dealt a bad card, and man, he's not let, let him stop. Very inspirational person. Yeah. 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 But he uses katsu all the way up to the start of his race because he he can't warm up. So he no. uses katsu to warm up. But uh, yeah. And when he warms up, he's fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, okay. We have, uh, thank you. These are, these are a uh, nice wide range of questions from, Bone spurs to shark sure. foot to uh, IT band to uh, yeah. pain in the foot. Yeah. And what I can say, what plantar fasciitis really taught me, uh, working on for years, again, I did all the ejections and st um, stories and stuff. If you really stop for a moment and say, where is this pain coming from? You got pain in your heel, but like with, with plantar fasciitis, majority, if I treat the calf muscle, before I address the calf muscle, probably about 15 years ago, I wasn't addressing that much. I got about 65, 70% success rate before I'd go to steroid shot and surgery. But once I added the focus on that calf muscle massage and, and that it has a whole cascade of events, like a domino effect, the foot relaxed, the strain was gone, the fascia got better. Uh, my point is that in medicine, okay, high blood pressure, well, what is that from? Or 
Uh, I've got, you know, a pain so for like the IT band's a great one. Well, you can have foot pain, but it's really IP, I, IT band. Address that first. You'd be amazed how many things just fall into place. And what's left over is very minuscule and very small. That's a general approach I have to medicine. And I learned that all from plantar fasciitis. Wow. You know, I, was, I did a lot of uh, reconstructive foot surgery, bunion surgery. And uh, once in private practice, I really, I, I was gently got into treating with children and a small procedure, I have a growing bone child, so the foot doesn't collapse down. When they get older, they don't get the bunions, they don't get the foot deformities and other things. Simply treating at a young age to channel, redirect where the body's going. First, later on, like I said, with I, I have friends and relatives just ignored, and as adult, now correct that problem, is a major reconstructive foot surgery, which could have been avoided. Again, going back to the source where it all came from. Great. Now I'm getting a bit off topic here. No, no, no. That's that's very good. That sort of holistic, really, what is yeah. the problem is a very good approach to medicine. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think more medicine. I wish we address the real causes before. You know, we only do the heroic surgeries, but if you go back in time, time machine, how could you prevent that from happening? Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you very much. Again, if you have My any pleasure. additional questions, send them to info, I-N-F-O, at katsu.com, and I can forward it on to Dr. Nelly. More than happy. I, I, I you know, I'm, I'm retired, but I, I never retired from podiatry. I just get retired from management of medicine. I'm done with that. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Thank you very much. All right. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye.